dokie. Hello everybody. So we are going to do a live today on this method here. Um, I'm just attempting to get ready. I'm a little bit, well I'm not very prepared today. You guys are going to have to bear with me and hopefully you can hear me all okay today. Um, so yeah, we'll just give it a couple of minutes and see who's coming on. And we're going to be doing this bubble effect here. I'm going to show you how I did this set of nails. They're absolutely trashed. <laughs> I absolutely annihilate my hands. So hopefully they won't look like the battered version. They'll look like the new ones that I posted. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Jade. Fab. Okay. Right, so I have a prepped nail right here. Um... So hopefully, let me just try and turn my camera around so I can see you all. Hello, I'm so glad you made it. So if you guys want to follow along, you're going to need some soapy water. So this is just very liquid, okay, in a little cup with some water. We're going to give this a really big stir up in a bit. I've got some crystals ready in case I want to stick that on. Um, I've got my no white top coat caviar beads and I've got my dark chameleon pigment. This is going to be available soon on my website. So a little teaser for you of this. But you can use a chrome or a holographic. We've got all of these on the website as well. Um, let's see who's on. You made it for life, Sean! Yay! <laughs> I'm so glad. Right, I can't find my dust brush anywhere. I literally don't know what I've done with my unicorn, so I'm just using my top. See, we're going to improvise. Hey, it's cool because it's only me. I don't have to worry about... I'm not going to do this with a customer, am I? <laughs> Could you imagine? Okay, so... We want this absolutely dust free here before we prep now because when we finished with our acrylic and you're gonna polish it all off smooth so that you're ready to do your artwork on the top. Now, I'm so sorry, but my thingy isn't actually moving. Let me see who's commented. Yes, these are a hand sculpted set that I am wearing at the moment. I've got to say, I've been very anti-tip for years, so it has become habitual for me to sculpt. And I have to say, Annabelle's tips have completely converted me back to tips but um for like i say it's habitual when i'm doing my own nails i tend to just jump straight back to um carving in but um for my russian almonds to get a true russian almond you do have to sculpt anyway so these are sculpted okay so i have just filed this one down nice and smooth i do need to use a buffing block though just to smooth it off that little bit more so you want a really smooth surface for when you're going to work with gel polish on the top of acrylic. We want this quite polished up and we want it completely clean as well. So it does need to be free of dust because we know gel polish hates dust. It's like it's arch nemesis. So that's how we need to do it. Let's have a look. Um, hello, Nail Studio by Becky. Hi, Sarah. Chelsea's on jade's on please could you save it i promise i will save it i'll save it it'll be going up on my youtube and my igtv as well guys so don't worry if you can't stay on hi jody um hi sophie wow there's loads of you on today okay so how i finish always my sets of acrylic i polish it with some acetone so acetone will melt the surface it evaporates too quickly and it's not left on long enough to penetrate through so it's not going to do any damage to the actual structure but it gives this really smooth finish so when i'm doing any kind of artwork on the top of my acrylic whether it's painting or anything i will always melt the top layer so it gives this perfect perfect finish to my acrylics so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to take my black gel polish i'm just going to dispense it so that you guys can watch me work it's a little bit easier so i'll put a big blob on there um and i am actually going to paint my black tip on now 
okay so pick how far down you want it so this is my tip as well um of how to do like a french with gel polish so um i will decide how far down i actually want the tip to come and i will go in a straight line more or less that's not very straight shan is it that's not straight is it guys look at that one bubble there Blech. not had enough caffeine today to keep me still I do, I do live on caffeine. I'm really naughty. I'm going to take my detail brush now. So now we want to decide how far down. This is how you create those really like flawless Frenches. What? I said that now. Why have I just jinxed myself? Watch this go totally wrong. Right, so we're going to decide how far down we want to come with the sides. And we're going to draw in these triangles that are going to meet up at the centre. And we want to paint all of this side panel in here. Okay. I have got the shakes today really bad. I do get this. This is normally if I've not eaten. So I have actually skipped um, lunch today. So this is why if you ever sit training with me, I'm like, no, I have to have an hour for my dinner. Because if I don't eat, I get terrible shakes. Um, I think Sean's the same. We've always been like that. So uh, when I'm painting as well, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I do balance on my wrist. So you learn to have that balance there and it keeps your hands steady, especially if you do get the shakes. So, you know, press down into your wrist and use your wrist to take that shake out. If you're trying to hold your hand up, your hand will shake like this. So plant your wrist down firmly, right? Really bed that down. It really does help. Um, let's have a look. Oh, fab. We've got a lot of you joining today. So I'm just sculpting these two triangles up into my square tip that I shaped on. So like I said, we drew it on in a square. And then once you've got these nice and even, then you can come in and you can start to round this section in. So we just do two little round bars there and there. And hey presto, we have a flawless French. So how easy is that? That's how to get it nice and straight every time. So you wanna do a straight line across with how far down you want your color to be. And then bring in two triangles either side. So hopefully you see saw how easy that was to do. And it just means that it's symmetrical. And it's easier to do that on every single nail because there's nothing worse is there than your French not being identical on all of the fingers. You know, if you've got sort of one that's sort of rounder then one's more almond. So doing it this method, breaking it down just really helps you to get that symmetrical effect on all of the fingers. So I'm just going to set that in my lamp now. You watch, my lamp will be dead. I do this all the time. Like I come in and I'm like, oh no, my lamp's dead. <laughs> it has, it literally has just died. Hold on, I've got to plug it in. I am such a loser for leaving my lamp off. I mean, who even does that? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do um, a couple of coats of the black. You want it to be quite intense and then we're gonna top coat it like we finished it. So I am going to go in with my no wipe top coat because it's just the best, isn't it? I absolutely love it. And remember, you don't, this doesn't bubble with thickness. So you can use this as thick as you want. So I do, I do apply my top coats quite thick. I love that really high gloss, like flawless finish that you get. Um, how can, how can it die? It's, um, mine is the cordless. So you charge it up. So it charges up and it basically can die if it's left on. So obviously I've gone home and left the power on and it has just died. So it does have a battery here, which is quite handy because if you're mobile, you can charge this up and it does last like a whole day. Okay. So I don't mean like I've ran over it with my car or something like that, that I've killed it, but you can kill it in another way, can't you? <laughs> Okay, right, I'm just going to give this another quick little coat. It doesn't need much. This black gloss is pretty dense, to be honest. Okay, just around the, the big area. Once I've carved my smile line in with my detail brush, I will never, ever have to go back up to my smile line. I make that thick enough so that it's just the rest that needs a second. So you're never affecting that smile line. So again, I'm just going to cure that under the lamp.
There we go. Oh, just you wait. Wait a minute, wait till this goes on. It does make all the difference if you do it that way. Um, but yeah, these lamps are wicked. These cordless ones, I absolutely love them. So I'll just wait for this to set and then I can pop my top coat on. Okay, so my top coat does need to be exactly where I want it. It does want to be. Do you know what? I'm actually, just so that it matches this one, going to pop a line across so that you, you get the full effect then, don't you? So let's do a line across. So I'm going to paint a black line further down here. I'm just going to thicken that up a bit because otherwise you don't really notice it on this particular type of design. So you want it to be thick enough that it shows up. So I'll come in at one side and then just bring it over on the other one so that it's nice and neat. And just square up that little edge just there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to set that one in. So they look like little shoes, don't they? You know, like with the little Alice band across the top. They're well cute. Oh, I'm so glad you've been looking forward to this. I've been asked so much about how I did this effect and it's so, so simple and it looks completely different with whatever you put underneath it. So I will do this again with some other gel polish colours soon because I want to show you sort of like a neon effect um, with a white top and it just looks incredible. So I've got some really cool stuff planned for you guys for some lives. I'm actually off next week, so I haven't got much training in, which gives me a week free. So hopefully I I can do you guys some tutorials my glitter bells no white top coat actually does get bubbles do you mean bubbles as in air bubbles in it or do you mean that it bubbles up um it might be that are you are you shaking the pot or are you stirring it or anything Sometimes temperatures can affect top coats as well. You can find certain top coats, they can crystallize as well. So make sure that you are keeping it in the correct place and make sure it's not out of date because gels do have a use by date on them. Okay, so once I have got this done here and I will just show you, if you have got gel paint brushes, then make sure that you clean them correctly. So the correct way to clean your brushes is with top coat. Um, so you want to press that brush down. Can you see the black coming out into the top coat? And you need to splay. Can you see how the bristles, now I've worked it through, are starting to really puff up and spread in the top coat. So we're pushing that clear all the way through. And then take a tissue, pinch the brush and squeeze it all the way out. You see all the colour come out of the brush. So if I was just going, say, from black to white, just cleaning it like that isn't enough. So make sure that you do clean your brushes correctly, jumping in between any kind of colour. Um, it does definitely help. But we are just sticking with the black at the moment, so it's not too bad. So I am going to pop my top coat over the top of anywhere that I have just painted black because I want a really smooth, shiny layer. So this is now going over the top here. And I'm going to bring it all in at my smile line. Okay. Up those sides. And then I can switch to my brush here. Just to take it down the edge. Gosh, hasn't it gone cold again? I was like wishing like summer was on its way last week. It went so warm. So that's the top coat on. It's going in the lamp. You love the bubble effect. It is so, so nice. Me and Sean absolutely love this in salon. So Sean is online. Sean is my head of department. She's one of my master nail team. She's been with me the longest. So Sean's my boo. I love you, Sean. Um, so Sean is incredible. Go and check her out. She did the 3D Sesame Street ones. She actually did a, a big bird. We were so impressed with her big bird. It was the cutest thing ever. So go check Sean out. Um, could you be putting it on too thick, hon? It's maybe not curing it long enough, but like I say, I've never had an issue with top coat bubbling. I've got to say the top coat, I can use this like a builder gel sometimes. You know, if you've got like the odd little dent 
in your um, acrylic where when you finish filing it and you go ahead and you put your top coat on you're like oh the light just reflects on it and you can see it's got that slight little bump I will go back in with my top coat and just sometimes fill out that you can just about disguise it with it okay so this is the best bit I absolutely love this bit so your pigment here now we're just going to pick this up you can use an eyeshadow applicator but we're just going to rub this bad boy all on here like so and it comes up straight away okay look at that oh, oh, oh. angel singing angel singing okay how amazing is that dark chameleon effect do you love it isn't it the beautiful okay so now we've got our pigment on we now need to protect the pigment okay so we've got to go back over again with our top coat so coming back in again with another layer of top coat there's about four layers of top coat goes goes on a set like this it's mad how many layers you have to do but it's very worth it at the end okay so once i've got my smile line in again and i'm going to carve all of this edging with a nice layer again make sure it's nice and smooth before you put it in the lamp always cross check it before you put it in the lamp as once it's set it is set you would have to take it all off to do it again if you get it wrong okay so that is now going back in the lamp the chromes and pigments do only attach to a high gloss top coat and it does need to be a no wipe top coat so it has to have no sticky people think there has to be a sticky for the pigment to stick and it doesn't it has to be a no wipe top coat and then really massage it in with a smooth surface so rubber gloves work really well or a very clean fingertip if your fingers have any grease on or oil like if you've just touched your face and you've got foundation on your hand it won't work so it, you must have really clean fingers um if you're going to use bare hands otherwise make, you can use one of these little sponge applicators which you'd normally get with your pigment pot anyway but you can just use this and really massage it in if you are using this one of my tips is be very careful um, because the actual plastic nib can pierce through and you'll scrape into your um into like the pigment on the top layer so you need to make sure that when you're massaging as this tip applicator wears over time make sure that it doesn't start bursting through and you don't scrape into so otherwise you'll end up with scores in your um so, so if you're having like a, a solid silver it can just destroy it um so yeah be careful of these things that when they wear down you're replacing them they cost like less than a penny each so it's pointless to quibble over pennies isn't it right so i need to mattify this now to get the effect that i did so i'm just going to run over that surface layer just with a buffer really really lightly let me just get my acrylic shine buffer out okay so I have just matted that with my buffing block. Okay, so that's with your acrylic buffer there. And then we are going to top coat one last time. Okay. So here is a nice layer of top coat going over the top again of anywhere where I want to bubble up so easy to do you'll be obsessed you'll be bubbling everything like when we first figured out how to do this we were like bubbling everything so this is the one you want to be really careful with now this is where your detail brushes really come in handy thank you doke and take that again right to the tip make sure it is nice and thin 
you don't want it dead thick and be careful especially if you're doing like these ones in particular it ran down the sides because they've got such long sides on the russian almonds okay then i am going to give this a really good splash about i want loads of bubbles to form in my cup okay so once you've got your bubbles in here you want to pick a load up and we're going to place it down onto the nail you've got to do this quite quickly you make sure that all of your top coat areas are covered in bubbles and then we pop this in the lamp okay and this sets with the bubbles on top like so completely covered straight in the lamp don't worry guys if you have just joined i will be posting this to my igtv it's not a problem oh i love the white buffing blocks they are nice i was saying the other day make sure you prep them people don't realize that they have to prep them like you would do files these can be razor sharp these edges and because people just go straight in hammering away you can actually slice the cuticles with this so do be careful that you i bend mine okay so i give them a really good bend about it softens it and breaks it all in like you would do an eyelash if you've got new lashes they're really stiff aren't they and we give them a good wiggle before we put them on so you want to get those little crinkles going on in there make sure it softens in and then take a blunt file and just take those little corners off and then it's good and ready to pr to work with then it will still last you a long time you just don't want to go cutting your clients do you okay so that is our finished nail there so i'm just going to take some tissue and um, do be careful not to rub because otherwise you'll shred your tissue because it can be quite sharp when it's first first done um you have to let it dry um so it will be wet from the fairy liquid so give it a minute or two okay it's not very clear on camera at the moment wait till it dries and it starts to go a little bit more matte um, and you get that sort of like white flaky edge that kicks in once it dries out it's just wet from the fairy liquid but that is the scale effect that i got with the bubbles over the top and the odd little shiny bit of top coat gives that little bit hints of sparkle they look like little crystals don't they so that's that there okay so the next thing you can do is you can add either a spider gel um these uh, you can somewhat use gel polish to spider with you it, you just it's not very easy okay you won't be get that same drag so your spider gels are that little bit easier if you want to create the spider webs um i would avoid using gel polish to create that spider effect it's you don't get the same effect if you if you can manage to get it with your gel polish because some do go a little bit stringy with age and they're sometimes a little bit better to work with um so if you do get that and you find that you can string across the odd little web then go ahead and do that but you need to set it really really quickly because gel polish will migrate it's not quite the same so you don't get the same tug across But can you see how it starts to spread straight away so every layer across you would have to set that under the lamp otherwise you end up just having a little bit of a disaster so don't worry if you do um you can use your gel residue um solutions which are your diamond shine cleansers to remove any gel polish if it goes wrong before it's set it completely dissolves the gel itself you can remove it okay so don't worry if you do have any gel accidents there we go then guys so that is my bubble effect nails so your options if you're applying crystals if you've got the base glue gel that is fantastic otherwise you can use the um the new effortless adhesion bear with me i'm getting gel everywhere what am i doing right now right so i've got my wax picker here for my crystals okay 
It's really important you don't get glue on the faces of the crystals. You will lose the sparkle. So if you're not used to working with crystals, it's really important you don't get glue or top coat over your crystals. It will completely lose its shine. So the wax pencil is just sticky enough that it will just automatically pick up straight away. Can you see how easy that is? So it saves you having to fight with your crystals. But you do have to do this quite quickly because the glue does set rather fast. So I would just dot this on halfway and I will get on the first couple. Okay. And then I'll do the other side. If you try and do it all in one go, you'll find your glue will go off really, really quickly. Um, and you won't, you'll lose the stick or you might knock one. So make sure that, there we go. Okay, so that's how I apply my crystals there. So that's just with the effortless adhesion glue. It's like three quid and it's really good. Okay. Then how I use caviar beads is kind of similar. But what I will do to make my life a little bit easier is I do use my detail brush for applying my caviar beads. So I know a lot of you do struggle with this because, again, it's something that I do get asked quite a lot is how do I work with the caviar beads? And they are difficult to work with. They're never going to necessarily be easy. They're so fiddly. But I'll put down a little bit of top coat here. I'm just going to wet my brush, pick up a good chunk of my caviar beads, and I'm going to mix them into my top coat. And that way then I can just pick them up and they've got a full coating and I can place them where I want them. Okay, so I do like to put them like in between all the crystals, like a little space fillers and things like that. But using my detail brush, I find it's so much easier so I can get straight into those little gaps and cracks and stuff. So you can see how quickly I'm working with this compared to any other method is quite difficult, really. So this is the easiest and quickest way that I've found to work with caviar beads. You can just use a gel on the brush and you can just touch and pick up the odd one, but you'll find you'll lose them or your client will very easily because they've not cut, they're not well coated. If you haven't placed almost like the gel down first that you're going to use as a glue you'll find that your client's going to ping them off really quickly okay just clean that up of any residue that i don't want there and then if i want a matte nail i do have to come back around with some matte top coat and i will just cover up any shine that's been left over from the gel polish okay there we go I'm just trying to read your comments. Uh, the buffing blocks are like a 240. I think they're maybe even higher, um, especially the acrylic buffer is super soft, but we're out of stock at the moment. Um, but the buffer, the buffing blocks are lush. But like I say, make sure you do, I, I blunt mine, I prefer them blunter than even when they come in. So I do make sure that I've taken the edge off those buffing blocks. There we go. So once you've set that top coat under the lamp, that is your finished result. So it's up to you then if you want to add um, your spider webs. I would do that before I pop my crystals on. My crystals are always my last thing to go on because the last thing you want to do is get anything on the top of them. Like I say, if you get anything on the faces, you'll find that, yeah, it'll just take all of the shine off there. Okay, so I have got some very exciting things coming. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little tutorial right there. Um, I've got some amazing things that have just happened, um, especially this week. We've had another um, delivery and we are now the official stockists of MoU London. So these are my new stamping plate range and stamping paints. Um, so this is like 
I suppose like nail varnish you can use it as just regular nail varnish um which you can't find nail var good nail varnish anywhere anymore people just don't have they don't sell it do they anywhere um but yeah mo you london their stamping polish doubles up as nail varnish so we have all these new plates and tons and tons of polishes in all of the colors have just arrived so they are now uploaded onto the website and they look incredible so this next week like i say i haven't got um i haven't let me just turn this around so you can have a look at the box here hold on one second i'm trying to like multitask i don't multitask well so we've got how cute are the flippy how flipping cute are they aren't they like mega cute um they are so so sweet but they're literally just for stamping so they're stamping polishes so um if you've been trying to do these stamping polishes and you don't understand why it's not working because you've been using gel polish you do need correct stamping paints so we've got these arriving along with um loads of other stuff and we are wiped out once again on my stock levels so i'm like can't keep up with you guys at all but this next week i am off like i say i think i've got like one class on the monday evening which is my e-file class it's maxed out i'm sorry i can't take any more students um but it is going to be good i am really looking forward to teaching you all my e-file techniques and everything um but after um e-file we i will be then going into having a little play with some new plates and hopefully that week this next week i can do some live tutorials on stamping paints and polishes i've got a how-to video going up onto my youtube so hopefully you guys will get a chance to go over and watch that i am going to end this live on this anyway and i am about to start a new one because somebody has asked me about client consultation forms and their importance and how we do hours in salon with our disclaimers so i'm just going to get set up with everything that i need to show you our software and what company we personally work with here at style um, and i will go through it with anybody that's interested so um if you guys want to stay tuned i will be popping up a new live shortly so give me five ten minutes guys and i'll be back with you but i hope you enjoyed our little tutorial okay <laughs> take care see you soon